Welcome to the second video of chapter 5, which is section 3, Use Angle Bisectors of Triangles. So in the previous video, we learned about perpendicular bisectors and the circumcenter. Today's video, we're going to be learning about a new type of segment, which is the angle bisector, and the center that corresponds with this segment. So we have one objective for today. We're going to find angles and side lengths using the angle bisector theorem. So before I tell you what that theorem is, we probably should talk about, well, what is an angle bisector? So if you draw yourself a triangle, an angle bisector bisects the angle. Okay, so every triangle is going to have three of these because you have three angles. So here's the angle bisector theorem. If a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant. from the sides of the angle. Okay, so here's what I'm saying with that. If I have an angle of some type and I have the bisector, I know this is the bisector because it creates two congruent angles. Now if I choose a point that is on that bisector, it will be the same distance from this ray, this side, as it is from this one. Now, what's important to notice is that in this case, the distance has to be perpendicular. There has to be a right angle. Distance is always measured with a right angle. Okay, so let's try some examples with this. Looking at example one, it says find the value of x in the figure below. Okay, so first thing that we're going to notice is we have two congruent segments right here. And they are both perpendicular. That tells you that this point right here is on the angle bisector of the triangle. So that tells you that these angles are congruent, in which case x is 27. Now, that's the way to think about the problem using the theorem that I just taught you. Like the last video, with perpendicular bisectors, there were two ways to think about each problem. There was the theorem way, and then there was the congruent triangles way. Same applies here. So if you can't remember this theorem, I want you to look for congruent triangles. So this is initially what we had. Now we have two right angles. We have these sides congruent, and the middle is congruent because of the reflexive property. You should notice that these triangles are congruent by HL. That means that their corresponding parts are congruent. So again, these angles are congruent, and X equals 27. Okay, so you maybe want to pause the video right now and make a note of that. There's two ways to think about each problem, the theorem and then looking for congruent triangles. So let's try that in the next example. Example 2 says find the value of x in the figure. So the first thing that I want you to do is mark those angles congruent. I should have marked them, but I didn't. So I'm telling you that those angles are congruent. Now we want to find the value of x. Okay, the reason I told you that those angles are congruent because that means that we have an angle bisector. Okay, two ways to think about this problem. Thinking about the theorem. Any point that is on the perpendicular bisector will be equidistant from the two sides of the triangle, which tells us this distance is congruent to that distance. And remember that the distances have to have a right angle. That tells us that 6x squared minus 7x equals 10x plus 3. That's the first way to think about the problem. We're going to solve it in a minute. Second way is to look for congruent triangles. Well, I notice I have a pair of congruent angles here. I have a pair of right angles here. And I have this reflexive property in the middle. That tells me that the triangles are congruent by AAS. So therefore, their corresponding parts are congruent. And I get 6x squared minus 7x equals 10x plus 3. Okay, so either way I end up with the same equation. Now, it's, now we just need to solve that equation. Now this is an algebra review that we haven't done in a while, or at all this year. I want to move everything to one side. So I get 6x squared minus 17x equals 3. I'm going to subtract 3. So I get 6x squared minus 17x minus 3 equals 0. Now, this is a quadratic. 
the way to solve a quadratic is by factoring. So it's been a while since you've factored probably, but we're going to have to split the middle on this, which is something that you learned last year. So with splitting the middle, you multiply these two numbers, 6 and negative 3, and you get negative 18. You're looking for two numbers that will multiply to negative 18 and add to be negative 17, the number in the middle. So multiplying to negative 18 would be 1 and 18, or 2 and 9, or 3 and 6. If I choose positive 1 and negative 18, they will add to negative 17. So now this is called splitting the middle because you rewrite the middle term. So I keep my 6x squared and I keep my negative 3 and I rewrite that negative 17x as positive 1x and negative 18x. Now we split down the middle and we factor both sides. On the left side both terms have an x so I factor out an x. That leaves me with 6x plus 1. On the right side, I factor out a negative 3, which leaves me with 6x plus 1. Remember from last year that these parentheses should match. That becomes my first factor. And then my second factor are the numbers outside x minus 3. Okay, so now we set both parts equal to 0. I get x equals negative 1 sixth and x equals 3. Now both of those will work. If I substitute both in, I will get positive answers. So in this case, we have two different answers. Now, I know that was a lot of algebra review that we haven't done. What I am most concerned about is that you can set up the problem. If you don't remember the factoring, that's okay. I just wanted to do a review with it. We'll do more of that in class, but you should know how to set up the problem at least. So let's look at example two. Example two says, do you have enough information to conclude that QS bisects angle PQR? So remember, two ways to think about it, the theorem and then the congruent triangles way. So thinking about the theorem, I need to know, is my point S equidistant from the sides of the triangle? Oh, not sides of the triangle, sides of the angle, I mean. Okay, well, I notice that I have congruent markings, but I'm missing the right angles. So, no, S is not an equidistant. So, I have no right angles. No right angles tells us that QS does not bisect. Okay, that's the first way to think about the problem. Second way to think about the problem is I need to know, are my triangles congruent? Well, I'm going to notice I have one pair of sides marked congruent. The middle side is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. This is SS. That's not a congruency theorem. So the triangles are not congruent. So this is not the bisector. So again, two ways, either use the theorem or the congruent triangles way. Either way is going to work, so whichever way you prefer. Right now, I would like you to flip the page, please. Okay, here's the examples that I would like you to try on your own. Remember that you have two ways to solve each problem. So the problems are, is there enough information to conclude that BD bisects angle ABC? So either use the theorem or determine if the triangles are congruent. Pause the video and come back when you are finished, please. Okay, let's see how we did. So the first problem I'm going to do both ways. So looking at this point, using the theorem, is that point equidistant from the sides? Well, you have these two segments that are marked perpendicular, but they're not necessarily marked congruent. So, no. D is not equidistant from the sides. Because D is not equidistant, 
That means BD is not necessarily the bisector. Okay, using congruent triangles, I have these right angles right here. I have this segment congruent to itself by the reflexive property. That's it. So no congruent triangles tells us BD is not the bisector. Now, please make sure that you have explanations written because it does say explain. If you write yes or no, I'm not going to count those as correct. Next problem, you should have gotten yes. You notice that point D is equidistant from the sides, and the triangles are congruent if you notice the reflexive in the middle. When you come to class, I'm going to be making sure that you have an explanation here of some type. If you got this question wrong, please make sure you fix your answer and that you ask in class if you have any questions. That's the first part of the section. That's the part about the angle bisectors. This section also involves a new center. So that's what we're going to learn next. Okay, so all three angle bisectors of a triangle intersect at what's called the in center. This point is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. And I'm going to tell you it's the center of the circle that's inside the triangle. Okay, so what you're going to notice here is that we have this big triangle. So this triangle right here. Okay, so the first thing that we did is we found all of the angle bisectors. So this is one angle bisector. So it bisected this angle. This is one angle bisector. And then this is our third angle bisector. They all intersected at this point A1, which is the end center. That is the center of this circle here that's inside the triangle. Now the circle is to help you find the congruent parts. So that circle is supposed to help you find all the radii. So I have this radius right here, which is going to be perpendicular. I have this one right here, which is perpendicular. And this one right here, which is perpendicular. So what you should know is all those red segments are congruent. They're radii. A circle can't have multiple different radii. So all the radii have to be the same length. Okay, I know this is confusing, so let's look at an, an example with some numbers. Okay, so figure 4, it says, in the figure below, N is the in-center of triangle ABC. Find ND. Okay, in-center. Anytime you have an in-center, I would like you to draw the circle inside the triangle. So in our case, that's this circle right here. Now, the circle is supposed to help you find all of the radii. So a radius is going to go from our center N to the side of the triangle, and it's going to be perpendicular. So this is another radius, and this is another radius. Now all of your radii are congruent. If NF is 13, that means NE is 13, and ND is also 13. So in this case, I get ND to be 13. So let's try the next one. Again, start by drawing your circle inside the triangle. Okay, so I have this radius NF, I have this radius NE, and I have this radius DN. I know that they're all congruent. The issue is that I don't actually know any of those radii. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to find one radius, and then I just know that they're all perpendicular. So right now we're going to focus on this triangle right here, this right triangle NFA. I know it's a right triangle, so the Pythagorean theorem applies. Remember, that's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, my radius is the side, or my hypotenuse is the side across from f. It's the side across from the right angle. So 20 is going to be c. c is always the hypotenuse, so the side across from the right angle. That means that a is going to be 16, and b is this last side here, which I don't know. Okay, 16 squared is 256. 
So I get 256 plus b squared equals 400. If I subtract 256, I get b squared equals 144. Taking the square root, hopefully you know the square root of 144 is 12. Okay, so that tells me that this radius nf is 12, therefore ne is also 12, and nd is also 12. So in this case, I get nd to be 12. Okay, so this should look very similar to what we did last section with the circumcenter. What you have to remember, though, is that this is the circle inside the triangle. So in center is the circle inside the triangle. Let's try to keep that in mind. Okay, we have one more page of notes left, left, so flip to the next page, please. Okay, so that's the end of the video that we are going to do together, but you have one problem on your own. So this video was about angle bisectors. We learned that any point on the angle bisector is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. And what you have to remember is that that distance is measured with a right angle. Another way to think about each problem is to look for the congruent triangles. And then we learned about the in-center, the center of the circle inside the triangle. So this problem on the right, you have to do. It says, is there enough information to find x? So I don't want to know what x equals. I just want to know, can you find x, yes or no? And you're going to need to explain your answer. When you come to class tomorrow, please make sure you have this problem finished. And pl please bring any questions that you may have. See you tomorrow.